Nathan's Famous Hot Dogs. If jubilant meat is your thing, then you might just have heard of Nathan's Famous Hot Dogs. If you hadn't, they'd just be called Nathan's Hot Dogs. This is not modern fame, reality TV star fame. This is not fame you can just self-declare in a social media bio. They do do that, but let's be frank. Notoriety is earned, acquired, one succulent frankfurter snap at a time. Coney Island, New York, was a different world when Nathan's Hot Dogs started in 1916. Instant fame wasn't a thing. Sharing bathwater was. If you contrast the austerity with the top hats and the fur coats, the ocean breeze might be constant and the promenade slightly changed. But imagine treating yourself to hard-earned calories, not knowing this was the future. In a first world extravaganza, every year an enthusiastic man in a hat introduces, to much fanfare, a troop of competitive eaters, to a backdrop of whooping and general razzmatazz. It is the 4th of July. It is America. On the corner of Surf and Stillwell, the usual Coney Island location, the eaters have 10 minutes to eat as many hot dogs and buns as they can. These athletes are not messing around. If you think eating scores of hot dogs in under 10 minutes is easy, then this may be the event for you. Link in the description below. The current champions, Miki Sudo and Joey Jaws Chestnut, manage 48.5 and 75 hot dogs respectively. Both now proud owners of the Mustard Belt and a restraining order from their local all-you-can-eat restaurant. Over a million people tune in each year to watch. ESPN brings you live coverage from the Spray Zone an area in the direct vicinity of contestants. The spray being made up of a special blend of second-hand hot dogs and water. So much so that a fearful reporter feels the need to wear protective clothing. So when did this esteemed American tradition start? Nathan's likes to tell the story of a group of immigrants in 1916 that decided to settle an argument by eating as many hot dogs as possible in order to prove who was the most American. An Irish immigrant by the name of James Mullen was said to be victorious, eating 13 Nathan's Nathan hot dogs in 12 minutes. While this is a nice story and very American, when the company itself that ought to know whether this is true or not starts a story with, legend has it, you know it probably isn't. 1972 is most likely the first as people can remember it. There are witnesses and a winner etc. You'd think you'd remember putting on an annual hot dog eating contest every year between 1916 and 1972, but legend has it, you'd be wrong. 1916 is the beginning of Nathan's hot dogs. With $300 borrowed from friends, the equivalent to over $7,000 today, Nathan Handwerker, a Polish immigrant to the United States, was encouraged to open a nickel hot dog stand by colleagues. The nickel price was important, as he was working for a German restaurant called Feltman's, with one of his tasks being a bun slicer. Feltman's sold hot dogs for 10 cents, and so Nathan's hot dogs was in direct competition, undercutting his former employer by selling at half the price. Interesting that unlike similar restaurants and food businesses that use surnames like Feltman's. Nathan Hanverker went with the name Nathan's Hot Dogs. This could be down to ease of pronunciation for an English-speaking American market. A sign that read Handworker Wieners may have attracted a different clientele. Brothel executive and infamous tax evader Al Capone was known to favor a trip to Nathan's for a hot dog, paying cash I assume. Ironically, with the end of Prohibition in 1933, Nathan served free beer to celebrate. Al Capone was already in prison by this point and would have been unable to attend. Nathan's was slowly gaining that famous reputation. Movie stars like Cary Grant were fans, and in 1939, President Roosevelt served Nathan's hot dogs to the King and Queen of the United Kingdom. This was most likely wheeled out as a demonstration of what Paul people are eating nowadays, while they chuckled and imitated peasants eating food with their hands before sitting down to a fancy six-course meal. Whether true or not, there was a steady pattern of politicians wanting to be seen eating at Nathan's hot dogs. The reason is obvious, if not a tad too transparent. Vote for me, I'm just like you. In fact, the governor of New York, Nelson Rockefeller, while on the campaign trail in 1969, remarked, no man can hope to get elected in New York State without being photographed eating hot dogs at Nathan's Famous. Nathan's and the relationship with baseball go back to 1952, when Nathan's Famous sponsors Coney Island Baseball League. In 2000, Nathan's becomes the official hot dog of the New York Yankees, and in 2017, signed a deal to become the official hot dog of Major League Baseball. Now, there is literally no excuse to not wear a hot dog hat. No excuse. Major League Baseball has a massive national audience. With over 240 Nathan's locations nationwide, there is still plenty of room for expanding, so reminding everyone outside of the local New York area of the Nathan's famous brand is a good strategic move.
Being a part of the local community was never more pertinent than in 2012 when Hurricane Sandy devastated the area. Coney Island was hugely impacted and Nathan's Famous was six feet underwater, forcing the closure of the original location. Closing wasn't something Nathan's was known for, but the company decided to fully renovate the entire place, putting a new clam bar with raw seafood, Coney Island lager and Belgian style beer. Although modernized, the location was able to continue serving their famous frankfurters that they've been selling for over a century. Much like White Castle and other early fast food trailblazers in America in the early 20th century, there was work needed to convince the public that the food being served was safe to eat, especially given the reputation at the time of the meat industry and the sanitation of meat processing plants. White Castle used white uniforms to reassure potential customers of the restaurant's cleanliness. According to the Smithsonian, Nathan Hanverker paid young men to stand around in front of his stand dressed in white coats. People thought that the young men were doctors and that if doctors were eating Nathan's hot dogs, then they must be fine. Operation Clean Wiener was clearly a success. From then on, the all-beef nickel hot dog went from strength to strength. In 1956, Nathan's opened a second restaurant location in Oceanside, Long Island. After Murray Hanverker, the son of Nathan Hanverker, had convinced his father that the location would work due to many Brooklynites relocating to Long Island. The menu evolved and some variations added over time. Various hot dog related options, as you would expect, began to appear. In 1946, Nathan's introduced a clam bar and seafood to its lineup. Coney Island is by the sea after all, so this makes sense. As is usual in family businesses such as this, it was the next generation that was responsible for expanding on the idea. In this case, Nathan Hanverker's son, Murray Hanverker. When Nathan died in 1974, at the age of 82, Murray began to expand the Nathan's Famous brand further, having been president of Nathan's Famous since 1968. In 1975, Nathan's acquired the Wetson's hamburger chain and the subsequent 70 locations in the greater New York area. These locations would soon be converted to Nathan's branded restaurants. In 1987, the Hanverker family sold the company to a group of private investors. Very soon after, franchises were opening up around New York and farther afield. Nathan's has strong brand reputation that offered an instant return on investment. The parallel with another New York institution, Katz's Deli, is an easy one to make. Katz's Deli could have gone the same way, but chose to stay a small, family-owned and operated business, right Right up until today. The benefit to the consumer is now you don't have to go to Coney Island or even New York for that matter to get a Nathan's famous hot dog. If you live in a different state or even a different country this is a good thing. When Nathan's wife Ida Hanverker contributed her secret family recipe it was the start of Nathan's famous hot dogs. As the name suggests hot dogs is what people associate with the Nathan's famous brand. Perception is important here. Although all the way back to the early days Nathan's served many other menu items apart from hot dogs. In recent times, there has been a push towards a revamped menu. This menu consists of Angus beef burgers, cheesesteaks, milkshakes, onion rings, and hand-dipped chicken sandwiches, as opposed to alternative dipping methods, all put together by a team of award-winning chefs with name recognition. You can't just have a non-famous person come up with an idea of putting cheese, bacon, and onion rings on a burger. Onion rings are too complicated. Fame, after all, is important at Nathan's. While this menu in its own right sounds delicious. The pictures look lovely. It isn't what people probably associate with a trip to Nathan's Famous. The marketing meeting probably went like this. What does Nathan's as a brand represent? Question mark. Words were called out. Hot dogs, Coney Island, eating contests, the beach, etc. And some agency executive looks up from their MacBook Pro and mutters New York. What was that? Nathan's Famous represents New York. That's it. People nod while standing to applaud. If Nathan's Famous epitomizes everything New York, then you can pretty much claim every food culture on earth. And the rise in popularity of premium burgers from the likes of Shake Shack and Five Guys or fried chicken from Chick-fil-A and Popeyes is tempting from a commercial point of view. McDonald's founder Ray Kroc allegedly once said, I don't know what we would be selling in the year 2000, but whatever it was, we would be selling it. Sometimes you have to diversify. Businesses have to pay attention. Joey Chestnut is paying attention. So if you ever find yourself in Coney Island and you're hungry with nothing to do, there's no need to be boardwalk to Nathan's Famous. If it's 4th of July, the crowd could be chanting your name. If handworking wieners as fast as you can isn't your thing, you could always run for office with a quick photo op. That secret recipe makes Nathan's Famous for a reason. And I'd have to agree. All things Nathan's Famous. Let me know. Thanks for watching.